thank you for joining me on the Mighty Dragon this evening. And with me, I have actor Miguel Lopez. How are you, sir? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm great. I'm just finally enjoying this 50 degree weather in here in New Jersey because it's been yeah. snowing for a, pretty badly <laughs> for the last like two weeks. Yes, it's been pretty crazy weather over in the States we've seen on the news here. So snow yeah. in places there shouldn't be snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. So I've got a Mandalorian background here. You were in the Mandalorian. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, what your route into acting was. How did you get into it? Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll start from a long time ago. Um, uh, my parents are from Spain, so I used to spend all my summers in Spain. And there was just one particular summer that I stayed a little bit longer because I begged my parents. I was like, hey, there's like this festival going on in Spain in September. Can I go? The school a little later instead of being there in September uh, and then they granted me that wish and then 9-11 happened so I got stuck in Spain for another I don't know it was like three weeks um, and by that time all of the electives and everything that you wanted to take in high school everybody already had their place in their class and I didn't know how to uh, express myself or emotions or anything like that so the only class that was available was theater arts. And I liked movies, I liked cinema. My dad showed me all the great movies, from Stanley Kubrick and Spielberg and Kurosawa and things like that. So I said, all right, let me jump into this. And then I just took it and ran with it. So yeah. that's kind of how I started. And what were, what were your favorite films from when you used to go to the cinema? Um, well, the first movie uh, I saw in the movies or in the cinema, uh, I'll never forget, was Hook. I think it was like 1991. Oh, okay, yeah. Hook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I that remember like that. The first movie, and I was like, yeah, I believe I, I'm a boy too. Like, I, I want to fly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was great. It was great. Um, but like some of my favorites uh, growing up, uh, I, I mean, I like like the Monster Squad, and um, I, I, not until. I believe that was like an intermediate school. My parents, uh, well, some of my friends introduced me to the Star Wars and the Indiana Joneses and yeah. all those big trilogies. Uh, so that's kind of when I fell in love with the, wow. the galaxy that, that George Lucas created. That's fantastic. You can see where you are now, how yeah. you learned that as a kid. And <laughs> little did you know that you'd be in, in the sort of Star Wars universe yourself later Yeah, I was kind of freaking out. I was freaking out uh, when oh I found my gosh. out. Because, you know, the Tusken Raiders are in, in, in episode uh, four, you know? They're like yeah. the original bad guy. It's like the first bad guy that you see, kind of. I mean, not really. You see Vader, but, um, yeah. but he's like, you know, anyway, we'll, we'll get to there, I guess. Yeah, the Tuscan Raiders, I was just going to say, they had an edge about them, didn't they? That they were very, very creepy. Um, to me, they were. And I was a kid when I watched uh, Star Wars, first of all, <laughs> the, yeah. the original ones. And they were super scary and creepy. It was a real dark side to them, really, yeah, I feel. Was behind those eyes, behind that yeah, tunnel vision of <laughs> eyes. It was like, what's back there? And then they make noises yeah. and nobody knows anything about them. Yes. So. Yes. Okay. I was going to ask you, you touched on your Spanish heritage there. Um, being, um, you know, speaking Spanish as well as English, has that given you more opportunities in the acting sort of it, arena? It has. Um, there's been many a times where, uh, I mean, my name is Miguel Angel Lopez. It's, it's very the John Smith of yeah. America. You know, it's like, it's yeah. very... Uh, a common name um, so it's like hard to get out of that pigeonhole yeah I'm I was born here I'm first generation American but both my parents are, are from Spain so when I started going to auditions uh, they were like hey uh, tone down the accent because we say everything with a th and not right. a th. so um, yeah it, it opened me up to commercials uh, which were which was great and you know there's a huge Spanish market which I love to be a part of. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just don't look like a Miguel Angel Lopez, and I get it. Um, but I'm I'm embracing it, and uh, it's great. I mean, diversity is a is a big thing that Hollywood and Atlanta and New York City is a, a part of now. So it's really yeah. nice. Um, but I would say, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely uh, given me more opportunities. 
for sure. Okay. I've got quite a few bilingual um, actors on my blog, and I'm always quite interested in their sort of range of uh, work that they do. And it's like, wow, it's so impressive. You know, they've, they've got so much more open to them, haven't they? I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, so I, I did two commercials, uh, one for Toyota, one for Walmart. I didn't, I didn't talk in either one of them, but they're in the Hispanic <laughs> network. So I was no, like, I okay, could do that. Shit. Yeah, I know. I know. So, you know, I, yeah. mean, uh, I was happy to do it, but I yeah. really wish that I could speak in some of those commercials, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about your acting career from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to The Mandalorian, what has been your favorite role uh, and why? I, I have to say the Tuscan Raider. Yeah, I, I yeah. loved uh, being on Agents, Agents of Shield. I was there two episodes. It was really nice. I was very, I was very sad that they canceled that show. Yeah, um, God, my was, husband yep. loves that. It loves that show. My husband. It was yeah. so much fun. It's, so, yeah. it's like what the Marvel universe is. And anyway, so so the weird thing is, is that they they wanted me for episode ten. Uh, the leap episode and uh, there's an agent that dies in that episode no spoilers but yeah you know. um and i'm sitting there in in the costumes with him and he's getting his makeup done and he introduces himself and he's like hey so i heard you're you're the agent more and i was like yeah yeah what's going on he goes one agent dies the other one gains his wings and i was like that would be so cool like if i take over or if i was a bigger part of this series whatever yeah. and then they called me like a few weeks later I, the, my first day on set was the day that that uh, stan lee died which oh, was super gosh. sad yeah, yeah 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 you could just kind of like feel it on the set everybody was sad and i think they they called it a half day that day mm. um but then they called me for episode one of that season and they gave me more lines and you know i had the name and i was like oh this, they're introducing this agent more guy let's get more of more you know yeah <laughs> and then we finished the this show and i was like oh they're gonna they're gonna cancel it and i was like they're oh. they're never going back to wherever i was you know so yeah how many seasons how many seasons seven, was that? seven. Oh gosh that's yeah. so annoying isn't it yeah. Ah, but um, so you, do, do you have any uh, special memories uh, from The Mandalorian behind the scenes? Oh, so many. You can share with us. <laughs> uh, so many. Um, I, I happened to bring The Shining to, to read while I was on set because we were there for wow. a week. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm over here reading The Shining and hanging out. And then I'm, I'm, I got to meet Pedro and John Favreau on, yeah. on my first day. It was like really nice. They were amazing. And then um, I asked uh, Pedro if he wanted to learn the sign language with me. And uh, and he was like, oh, they sent that to you? I was like, what do you mean? You you haven't gotten it yet? And he goes, they, they don't send me anything, man. Yeah, let's uh, let's work on this sign language. So the next morning we like, uh, it, we're, we're in, in like our, our dressing rooms uh, shared a wall or whatever. And we're talking about the sign language and then uh, He's like, question, um, was it you that was reading The Shining that day? And I was like, yeah, that was me. And he goes, and then we just started talking about Kubrick and The Shining and everything. And, and Pedro and I, I don't know, we, we, we became close in, the, in that week that I was on set, which was fantastic. But then they were in the middle of the conversation and they called us into that room, the amazing volume. And it's like Pedro's on my left, John's in front of me, Timothy Oliphant, <laughs> my other friend uh, Xavier that played Tuscan Raider number two, and we like walk into this set, and I was like, I'm on, I'm on tattoo, like what is going <laughs> Amazing. on? We were we were outside yesterday, but I'm in tattooing today because when I started shooting, there was there was no um, like idea of like where they were shooting these these amazing outdoor shots i was like i don't know what any like they they must be in some serious locations nope turns out that they were in el segundo los angeles california and in this amazing room so they're like move the wall or, or move the mountains a little to the left and bring the sunset down and make the hues and i just couldn't believe it i was like in awe and he was like and like pedro nudged me and he's like uh-huh <laughs> like he like brought me back to life i was like this is this is crazy um, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, it was it was really cool. There was like a, a lot of great moments, um, and a lot of things that they uh, they they cut out, um, which is sad. But it, it, I mean, you gotta you gotta appease the story and you gotta yeah. move forward. 
Um, but uh, like whenever, whenever, let's call him Grogu because that's his name. Yeah. I found out his name that day. Okay. And uh, and and then I was like, when that episode came out, I was like, they're gonna they're gonna name him. I don't know when because they only send you your specific sides. And I was right. Like, they're gonna name him, and then uh, that that name didn't come out. And then I was like, what what? Wait, what did I miss? And then episode two, and then three, and then four. I said they're never gonna name this guy. And then finally, <laughs> the most meaningful, most spectacular way of naming this creature was through the force, and it made so much sense. I was kind of freaking out then. But um, amazing. Yeah, but whenever Baby Yoda is on on the set, and everyone's like, oh, we gotta get coverage of him. Everybody stops what they're doing. Nobody breathes and goes to the nearest monitor, and they're like, oh, oh, oh It so is the cutest thing <laughs> I have ever seen. I know, really... <laughs> I know. I hate to say it, but I know. It's so cool. It totally like, is. There, there was that moment when they had the, the flamethrower, and they, they needed to get his reaction. So they have this, like, weird, uh, like, FX light that does all the colors, and yeah. doing his reactions and they're like all right make him sad and he's like make him scared and, you know, oh just, my god they, they go through <laughs> all of the ranges of emotion for him and everybody's just like oh, he's so <laughs> i mean there's so, there, there's so many things that i could say it was, it was like a, yeah um, it was a dream to be on that set and everybody was really nice and you know yeah. i wish to go back and did you feel a lot of pressure on there or were you just like really enjoying it and you didn't feel much pressure I didn't feel much pressure at all, and uh, it was it was a dream working for John. Yeah. Because, you know, like I'm, I don't want to say that I'm a nobody, but I I had a vision for for what I, what I was doing, and I would ask John, and John would say, "Let's try it. Let's do it." Yeah. However, and whenever I did it, it was like, yeah, he gets it. So like that argument that I was having around the fire with Timothy Oliphant, he's like, this needs to, needs to spice it up. Let's, let's figure it out. And then yeah. like, Timothy kind of like throws the thing in there. And then I stood up and then he was like, yeah, that's it. Everybody get their clothes on. Well, let's do this. Let's do it. Right. Like he, we, we get it, you know? So it was like really nice. And I would recommend something and he was always open and willing for me to try it. And Amazing. I, I love Amazing. It. So, really so not, hopefully not much pressure. we'll see you back on there. Yeah, it would be great. It would be great. Um, yeah. I'm, we'll see. You know, it's like yeah. the only gig in town, really. But don't you think that it's more aligned to the original Star Wars films? It has the it's, essence of it. it. Ha it's Yeah. it has. It's like a breath of fresh air. Um, Absolutely. It's a breath of fresh air. I, I mean, people could be mad at me for saying that, but I mean, the newest trilogy... I wasn't crazy about it. Um, there was it was just too much. What I love yeah. about the Mandalorian is it's very very honed in to very specific people, and yeah. it's it's short, it's sweet. They get it. They understand the world that they're in. Dave yeah. Filoni is like a genius. As soon as I I finished season one of Mandalorian, I went through and I watched all of Clone Wars, and then I watched all of Rebels, um, and just like the his story and how he sees. Lucas's world is yeah. fantastic. So yeah, fantastic. And I have to ask you, as a child, who was your favorite Star Wars character? Well, I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> Boba Fett. Oh, he was the most oh. mysterious character. Yeah. And you know, like everybody was like, "Oh, I love Han Solo. He's like cool and he's quick and he's witty and he he's got it going on and he's got Princess Leia." And I was like, "Yeah, but Boba Fett caught him." Absolutely. You know, like as, Boba Fett as, is the man. He, you know, like he was like mysterious. Like I, I like. I guess I like all of the 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 masked characters. Yeah. Like who? Like Vader. He was very terrifying. Yeah. Boba Fett. And then uh, I guess that's really those are really uh, the only two. I mean, but who doesn't I, like? Yeah. Like I think Jeremy Bullock, who unfortunately passed away recently, I think he would have been so proud to see what has happened to that character of Boba uh, yeah. Fett and his evolution, especially we're going to see the uh, Boba Fett diaries this year, aren't we? Uh, by the end of the we year, are. I assume. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm that would be as that. good as The Mandalorian. Oh, <laughs> you need to sure go in for that. <laughs> well, I, sure, I would love to. Uh, yeah. And then, and then we got Kenobi shooting. Yeah. As well. I think that's shooting in London, um, which I'm Apparently a little too far so. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to ha go back to London and hang out. I'm in the countryside at the moment, so I'm okay. going to go back and hang around somewhere. <laughs> Nobody needs to be in any cities right now. Just like, <laughs> exactly. go be in the countryside because it's <laughs> wonderful and beautiful. Yes. And live off the land. Yes. And, and social distancing is a lot easier. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to touch upon your time in New York, and it seemed that you were more into theater than theater yeah. work. Is that something that you'd like to return to? I, I I pray that theater does not die due to COVID, you know, like yeah. it's, uh, it's such a raw experience being there. Every night is unique. Um, yeah. And, and there's like all these nuances that you find with your character when, you know, you get audience reactions that you didn't expect or today I'm not feeling this well, but I'm going to give it my best or whatever. I, I miss it. I'm, I'm, I miss that whole aspect of the raw energy that the audience gives you. Um, film is great and it pays. Theater doesn't pay that much at the okay. moment. Back. That's like kind of where I started. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's where I want to finish, but I would love to eventually have some sort of uh, uh, just be able to do a play on Broadway or or somewhere. You know. Yeah. There's, that's like the. That's the upper echelons of acting for me, I think. Well, one of my past guests mentioned that in L.A. that there isn't such a theatre scene like they have in New York. It's completely different. It's like a film there and theatre over in New York. Is that right? Yeah, that's 100 percent correct. I, yes. Yeah, it's it's correct. I was uh, going to move back to New York because I missed it. I, I went to go see a bunch of Broadway plays. But then I flew back to L.A. and there just so happened to be this small black box theatre uh casting for this crazy show and audition for it just to see if i got it i got it and yeah. two weeks later the director quit and she was like miguel i don't think that anybody should take over this whole production except for you would you take the job and i, I said uh sure and <laughs> i ended up like recasting both of the shows that i was doing and directed theater for like six months it was a like, really cool experience yeah um, will I ever do it again? Probably not. Uh, not under those circumstances, but uh, it's like really small over there. There's a few theaters, but nothing like Broadway or New York City. Would you say that uh, theater acting enhances an actor even more, gives them equipped with more tools? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, thing, the thing about theater acting is that everything is very big, you know, but once you, once you know how big big is, then it is, it's easier to, to reel it in, in right. a sense. And in in uh, television, everything is so small, minute, and whatever. But it's it's hard for when you need to be big. You don't know how big you, you can get, or there's like that yes. experience of not being big. But once, you're, once you're in the game of theater, everything is, there's a, a great range that, that we learn as actors. So yeah, I think it's, okay. it's very important. Uh, and then you get to shake out those nerves. You have real people there. And, yeah. Uh, film and television is different. It's fun because you yeah. can do it again or, you know, try it. And it's all the magic of editing, really. Yeah. Cool. Um, how did you adapt as an artist to the challenges of 2020 with the pandemic? Oh, geez. Um, to be honest, I really haven't. Um, it's been really hard. And I say this. Uh, because when I was living in LA, uh, everything shut down, you know, and it was, uh, it was okay because it was only going to be two weeks, but then it started to prolong and prolong. And, you know, I just tried to stay, uh, you know, mentally sane and physically fit. So I started reading a lot of plays, reading a lot of books. Um, and, and then I slowly saw that the industry started moving to Atlanta and more people are going to Atlanta and oh. and yeah yeah so now i'm in the process of like considering to move to Atlanta for just a short period of time because that's kind of where everything's going um and why i've also why is that why is that do you think because georgia has like amazing tax tax credits uh, right so it's like let's just say a quarter of your budget kind of goes back to your pocket um, yeah. But now because of all these productions costing more because of COVID, uh, they're getting a little less in their pocket, but they're still not spending as much in a right. sense. Um, but what I have found is that like I missed writing. I, I, I wrote two feature films 
about uh, like one was six years ago, the other one was about was like four years ago. So I finished my third feature, and um, and then uh, I'm working on my fourth feature now. And I've yeah. been into photography and videography, and I like being behind the camera as well. So hopefully someday in 2021, maybe I'll direct something, or maybe I'll sell my screenplay or something yes. like that. So that's kind but of when you I'm do. Doing. You'll be welcome yeah. back on to the Mike T Dragon and we can oh, <laughs> chat about it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so 2021, this is going to be more scripts. Yeah. I think maybe the Mandalorian. Maybe, maybe. Uh, they did give me another opportunity to be on season three. Uh, yeah. And I didn't get it. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff coming. So yeah. from what I hear. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. But more like season four. Let's go season four. Oh, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can't they're, wait. They're, for the, they're, Yeah. They're, they're a big office that, that likes to cast everything before they go into production because yeah. they are working in that volume. Uh, and, you know, they could just be like, boom, boom, boom. We're going to shoot all of this in this set, yeah. whatever. Uh, so it's easier for them. But yeah, let's go season four. That'd be great. Fantastic. Well, I just wanted to wish you all the best and thank you so much for joining me here, yeah, um, Miguel. And how do I say thank you and goodbye in Spanish? Uh, muchas gracias y hasta luego. Oh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, yeah, y hasta luego. Y hasta luego. There you go. <laughs> Perfecto. See, <laughs> I did it. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank uh, you. hopefully speak to you again soon. Yeah, sounds great, Victoria. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you to Miguel Lopez for his time and see you soon on The Mighty Dragon.